I want to thank everyone for coming here this evening. I appreciate your support, the support of everyone here. Uh, I want to thank the press for their interest in this story. Uh, and I want to thank the supporters for being here as well. Uh, really, it's through your courage that more Americans than ever can proudly stand up and say, I am an atheist. And a special thank you to our, our speakers here this afternoon, this evening, uh, who I'll introduce in just a moment, who have come to upstate New York to support our efforts as non-believers, but more importantly, to support our efforts to be included as full members in the process of governing. We have a social contract in this country. This contract states that I won't use the power of the state to promote my religious point of view, if you will also refrain from promoting yours. Unfortunately, five of the nine justices of the Supreme Court recently decided that this contract no longer exists. Frankly, they're wrong. But while we can't change the court's decision, we can shift the ground from under their feet. And no one is doing more to make that happen than the people standing with me here this evening. So first up to talk is Mr. Ron Lindsay. He is the president and CEO of the Center for Inquiry. In addition to a law degree, Ron holds a PhD in philosophy, which makes him perhaps uniquely qualified to not only explain why today's event was so important, but also to advance the cause of secularism, as he does uh, in his upcoming book titled The Necessity of Secularism. Please welcome Ron Lindsay. Uh, as Dan mentioned, I'm the president of the Center for Inquiry. We're an educational and advocacy organization. One of the things we advocate for is freedom of conscience for everyone and an end to any type of discrimination against individuals because of their religious beliefs. What we just witnessed a few moments ago, an atheist invocation at the opening of the town meeting, may seem like a relatively small, self-contained event. After all Dan's remarks, only took a couple of minutes, eloquent as they were. But make no mistake about it, this was an event of considerable significance, indeed of historic significance. In a democratic society, our government institutions, our government bodies, have an obligation to represent equally the interests of all citizens, regardless of their religious beliefs. And that includes whether or not they believe in God or gods. Unfortunately, that obligation has not always been met. Historically, atheists, agnostics, and freethinkers have been the targets of both legal and de facto discrimination. This despite the fact that the United States Constitution clearly establishes a secular government. Furthermore, atheists, agnostics, and freethinkers have been the object of hostility, suspicion, and mistrust all because of the fact that they don't believe in God. And part of the reason for that prejudice is the unfounded belief that morality in general, and being a good citizen in particular, is necessarily tied to belief in God. And that prejudice, sadly, is reinforced when government bodies use prayers to God as the exclusive means of opening their official meetings. That prejudice must be overcome, and has to be overcome, if we're truly to be a unified nation. If this nation is to truly represent the diversity of views held in this country, and that includes the views of the substantial number of Americans who do not believe in God. And Dan's opening remarks today, we believe, represent an important step forward toward that objective. I want to note, as Dan already alluded to, that the Center for Inquiry and the most of the groups represented here today uh, were disappointed in the Supreme Court decision. Frankly, we prefer uh, the government meetings not open with invocations of any kind. Because given human nature, there's always going to be a tendency to favor majoritarian sentiment. And we firmly believe that people should have complete freedom of conscience, should be able to come to their own conclusions about religious matters, 
without any prodding, support, or pressure from the government. That said, the Supreme Court has spoken, and our task now is to work to help ensure freedom of conscience within the guidelines established by the Supreme Court. And for that reason, we firmly support the efforts of Dan and others to make invocations at government meetings as inclusive as possible. Thank you.